Hello Aquarius and welcome to your year 2023 astrology and horoscope forecast. This is for the sun or the ascendant. What I'm going to do first is outline to you how I'm going to structure this video so you can get a real template of how I'm going to approach things. Now we all know that each year consists of 52 weeks beginning on the 1st of January but the Western Tropical Zodiac begins with the Spring Equinox on the 20th of March in 2023. This divides the year each of these events, starting with the Spring Equinox, followed by the Summer Solstice, the Autumnal Equinox and the Winter Solstice. It divides each year into four quadrants of 13 weeks. These are known as cardinal quadrants, very much to do with action, a bit like the Wands cards in Tarot. Now, we first of all need to look at what was going on with the final winter solstice cardinal quadrant of 2022, because that will provide an insight to the first 12 weeks of this new year. Also, there was a total solar eclipse on the 8th of November, which was incredibly powerful and that's going to provide a backdrop for the first four months of 2023. Now the solar return, that point when we enter the new year, gives us a snapshot of what we can expect for the whole of the 12 months ahead and there are some really exciting things to share with you, not least Mars and Jupiter in a very compelling relationship which will be particularly helpful for the sign of Aquarius. Then of course we have some key movers this year. Mars is going to be staying in the fifth house which is very passionate and very expressive through to the 25th of March but then will go back into its traditional pattern of six week transits. But we have Saturn on March the 7th moving out of Aquarius and into the sign of Pisces. What does that specifically mean for your sign? And of course a lot of people are going to be talking about that but also Pluto on March the 23rd moving into the sign of Aquarius. But it's only a brief sojourn this year through till June the 11th. The real action is going to start from January 2024 but I will uh, explore that with you. Now of course we do have uh, the lunations and the two principal lunations this year are the solar eclipses in the sign of Aries on the 20th and 21st of April and the solar eclipse in Libra, very exciting for you because this shares your air tropicity and that occurs in October 23 and wonderful for expanding your horizons. But we still have two lunar eclipses to look at which are going across the axis of the signs of Taurus and Scorpio, much more sensitive and we need to understand how they're reflecting the energy that really came to the boil in 2022 and how that theme is developing very much about where you live, how you live there and whom with. And of course Uranus, your modern ruler, continues its journey in your fourth house, which can be disruptive. But this year, Jupiter, the planet of fortune and growth, arrives in this sector on the 16th of May. So really exciting and I'm going to really enjoy sharing that news with you. And then the North Node reverses into the sign of Aries on the 12th of July. Thinking back 18 and a half years ago, this would have prompted a lot of uh, much greater mental intensity and communication and it can do so again. And of course Venus, the planet of love and relating, is in a glorious extended journey through your sector of relating in the sign of Leo for four and a half months and that begins on June the 6th. So really important to share that with you. We also have the new moon in Aquarius 21st of January. We also have on August the 1st, the Aquarius full moon. 
So important to examine those for you. So lots to share. And what I'm going to be doing is going through each key event uh, one by one throughout the year in forensic detail. So please do stay with me for each of those explanations. But if you would like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast and understand what year 2023 will hold for you as an individual, if you give me three pieces of birth data of time, date and place, I can prepare your uniquely personal forecast for the year. If you order in 22, you'll get the rest of that year free. Plus also in my special package of 30% off, you will get my roadmap, the character analysis that can guide you for the rest of your life and really help you to understand some repetitive patterns that maybe have proved tricky in your life or where you can really quarry greater potential that may still lie somewhat untapped. And finally, if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. If you've already done so, thank you so much for all your support. So Aquarius, let's first of all look at a total lunar eclipse which occurred on the 8th of November 2022. Now that cascaded a lot of very turbulent energy into your situation because the moon was conjunct the rather restless energies of Uranus in your fourth house of home, emotion, family. That side of you that can be a little bit changeable will definitely be emphasized by this influence. But the thing is the sun on the other side of the heavens is in the part of your scope to do with responsibilities and your worldly interactions. But something can change in terms of your needs, maybe your fam family needs, just as the year comes to a close. And because Saturn, your traditional ruler, is T-square in both the position of the Moon and Uranus, but also the Sun, some kind of limitation or frustration may have been quite pronounced as the curtain came down on uh, last year. But this energy can show itself into the first parts of 2023, particularly if you're living somewhere that's not as ideal as you would like. Perhaps you're needing more space. Perhaps you're needing a little bit more of a quieter environment. The fourth house, very much about the environment. But also, whatever your situation, perhaps you're just feeling quite changeable. And it could be about your work as well especially if you're in a job that doesn't give you a lot of emotional satisfaction. But that brings us to the final cardinal quadrant of 2022. This is when the sun makes its way into Capricorn. And for us all, this is when we're thinking about things to do with security in a physical sense, anything to do with uh, uh, the structure of our lives, and for you personally, this is the 12th house, which can be a time when we want to just think very carefully about what we want from our situations. Now, a lot of people are very bubbly and outgoing, of course, just in the run up to Christmas. But there could be part of you that does want some more peace and tranquility, but not totally, because this particular event does square up with Jupiter which can be a very exuberant link. You can also be a very kind and generous person, especially to those people who are less fortunate. And it may be, especially with uh, the cost of living crisis that's really uh, closing in, that you're doing your best to help those who are less fortunate. But also on that cardinal quadrant, the moon and Mars are in opposition. The moon is actually in the free spirited sign of Sagittarius, whereas Mars, of course, is in your fifth house in the sign of Gemini. And it's going to be there uh, right through to the 25th of March, completing a seven month and six day journey. So a colossal uh, energy. 
But the opposition between the, Mar the, the Mars position and the Moon can be quite highly charged. Balancing what you want from your social situation, which is the Mars influence, from what you need perhaps more to do with your uh, uh, longer term uh, uh, situation and, and perhaps also thinking about friendships may be a bit challenging. You're trying to juggle quite a few different priorities. But the midpoint, the Sun obviously in Capricorn at nought degrees and the Moon in Sagittarius is Sagittarius and that's squaring up to Neptune. Neptune, the planet of dreams, which has been in your sector of everyday finance since 2012. But the second house is also about our foundations and our base security. And the swirling mist of Neptune has made things a bit tricky in that regard for you over those recent years. And I'm going to tell you that Neptune is going to be an incredibly important influence throughout 23, more so than Saturn and also Pluto, in my humble opinion. So this particular square between the midpoint and Neptune is just saying that when it comes to your friendships, be guided by values and also by energy. So if there are people that you're fond of, but maybe they've got different values to you, or they tend to drain you a little bit, just be conscious of that because that can be a factor in this first 12 weeks of the new year. But that brings us to the solar return. This is an incredibly important uh, time of the year because this provides the backdrop information of how the year will unfold for the entirety of its duration. Now, one of the standout influences is Jupiter still in the sign of Aries, that everyday communication. He's forging a wonderful sextile to Mars, even though it is in retrograde in that fifth house. So your passion and enthusiasm are going to be really bubbling to the fore throughout 2023. So that's a really positive alliance. However, the midpoint between the moon and the sun as we get to the turn of the year is in Pisces just under seven degrees your second house where Neptune is very much to do with everyday resources our sense of self-worth and that's squaring up to Mars so a fifth second house uh, square is not the best when it comes to speculation now we all know we're facing these huge headwinds when it comes to costs, interest rates, and I feel that there will be a decline in property valuations this year. But because of this, you may already be thinking very conservatively about how you're going to use the money you have. And of course, Saturn is going to add grist to the mill when it comes to being a bit more conservative in this way. But this particular aspect could tempt you you know, to be a little bit more gung-ho, whether it's around uh, a business idea you have, or even in terms of your generosity to someone that you find very attractive in a romantic context. So I'm not saying that you should be totally refraining from speculating, but just very mindful that uh, if you speculate in a way which you can't ultimately afford, that's something you should very much avoid. Now, of course, the turn of the year always has the sun in Capricorn, and this year is no different. And just like the start of 2022, the sun's angling positively to your modern ruler of Uranus. So this suggests the sun in your 12th house of psychological uh, understanding, of your more spiritual appreciation and anything to do with your deeper emotions is linking very much to that more dramatic and erratic energy of Uranus. So what does this tell us? Well, it suggests you should be guided by your deeper hunches throughout this year, just like last year. And it's important to keep being open-minded about some of your options, particularly where you live. I think that's one of the things that does remain somewhat restless and uncertain. 
But also at the turn of this year, Mercury, the planet of communication, is in retrograde in the 12th house. One of the challenges us Aquarius people will have for the entirety of this year is remaining positive when we don't hear from others because this can create a sense of isolation, a sense of anxiety. We can start to overthink things with Mercury retrograde in the 12th house or we can turn it to our advantage and appreciate that pretty well every Aquarius person can be an armchair psychologist. So use the depth of Mercury in the 12th house in retrograde to continue to grow your understanding of your deepest needs, but also the behavior of other people so that it's not something you're going to react to quite as strongly. Now, I think a lot of astrologers will put a, a huge amount of emphasis on Pluto moving out of the 12th house and into Aquarius, but it really is a brief transit. And by the 11th of June, Pluto's back in the 12th house. So along with this Mercury retrograde, I still feel there is some work to be done in really coming to terms with some of the shadow sides of my nature and also potentially yours. No one can judge this apart from ourselves, but the 12th house can be a very subconscious influence and we must also be aware that it could teach us about the people that we can't relate to and that can be quite a painful journey when we realize that people are not appreciating who we are but they may not say it outright and the reason for this is of course the 12th house is in traditional astrology the sector of secret enemies so i don't want you to be overly worried about Mercury retrograde in the 12th house, but I, I feel it is going to be important to keep working at that spiritual, psychological and emotional dimension. And there may be times this year, even though there are some huge bubbly opportunities, when you do really need, it to, be, need to be guided by your sixth sense, your hunches, even if it seems a little illogical. Now also at the turn of the year, Venus and Pluto are in a conjunction. Venus is going to have a huge impact on our year, but in this particular combination, it suggests that some kind of connection to the past may still turn out to be very relevant to the future. Now, maybe it's past lessons around relationships that you're still working with that can guide your future moves. It is possible for some Aquarius people that someone from your past could come back into your situation. But just be mindful if this happens of why that relationship didn't work out the time before. A lot of people write to me on YouTube saying, do you feel that I'm going to get back together with a partner? And the one thing I don't want to do an ex-partner is give any kind of false hope because there is no general rule. It depends on each person's natal birth chart, which gives us the real deep dive information of possibilities. But in a general sense, I think you could be feeling very nostalgic. Uh, you could uh, really uh, have such a huge connection to past events or past people and there may be a need to let go of something that didn't work out. So a process of grieving could be possible but then again Venus can join in or conjunct uh, Pluto more technically correct does suggest that there could be a secret alliance, there could be some kind of clandestine attraction or a relationship can build up in a very slow but very meaningful way so very powerful link because Pluto is about transformation but it is of course about power and when power Pluto is with the more uh, receptive energies of Venus we have to be conscious of what motives are so if you encounter someone who seems to be very seductive try to understand what you're drawn to and what they're triggering within you but also what they may what their motives may be as well so that is crucially important 
But on that uh, solar return, we do have uh, a wonderful opportunity for you to think about that uh, concept of self-worth with that midpoint in a very fortunate position, I should say, in the sign of Pisces, but it is, as I mentioned before, squaring up with Mars. But you can really retain some real positivity for this year with that link between Mars and Jupiter. But I just feel understanding the psychological dimension is just going to be as important this year as it has been since 2008 when Pluto first entered Capricorn. And Capricorn moving into Aquarius this year briefly is not really significantly going to change this. So this brings us to January the 12th when Mars goes direct and that's something we can all celebrate. But the fifth house where Mars is through to the 25th of March is a very sassy location. It can be flirty and it can give you greater, a greater sense of attractiveness. And also if you want to be more physically active or self-expressive, if you're a more creative type of person, Mars going forwards is a fab opportunity for the following three months. So on the 18th, Mercury goes direct. Now, of course, the Mercury retrograde at the start of the year is going to be a compelling part of this year's story, but it moving forwards can just ease some of the anxiety or sense of detachment that Mercury retrograde in the 12th house can create. But big moments on January the 21st. The new moon in Aquarius comes quickly this year and this gives you an opportunity to really visualize the individual plans that are exciting you or inject those ongoing strands that are already important with greater verve and drive. But this particular new moon also has Venus in Aquarius which can be a very humanitarian influence in a conjunction with Saturn. So I think this is very much about you, the individual, and it could make you a little bit more choosy about some of your associations. Whilst Venus in your seventh house for those four and a half months uh, later this year can be glorious for your interactions with others because I feel you'll be able to flex into what people want. At this time, I think you're going to be quite picky. So if there is something you're not particularly happy with, you're likely to want to articulate that to the person concerned. But as ever with a new moon, and of course Venus can be about appearance as well through its rulership of Libra, it could be that you want to remodel uh, some elements of your clothes or your hair and, uh, and so on. Now, on the 22nd of January, your modern ruler Uranus also ends its retrograde. That restlessness or restriction around your home or emotional situation should lighten up a little bit with this change. Uh, certainly one to be pleased about. Now, that brings us to the new moon of Pisces of the 20th of February. And this is also influenced by Saturn but this time Saturn's just come into the end of your sign still in Aquarius but the new moon in Pisces is ordinarily very much about your resources about your self-worth of course uh, Saturn's going to be moving into the sign of Pisces on March the 7th so this is really the last moment that Saturn's in your sign but it still impacts on your second house so interesting, perhaps something you've been working on individually can now start to show signs of shaping up in some kind of substantive way, or perhaps you're really going to start to see a financial situation contract a little bit. It depends on your unique circumstances. So that brings us to March the 7th and the arrival of Saturn in the sign of Pisces, undoubtedly one of the biggest events of this year. The sign of Pisces is of course ruled by water and it can be a very kindly and very compassionate sign. Saturn brings a bit of a jolt of reality so how we use water is going to be one of the big themes over the next near to 30 months. 
But in your personal situation, what does the second solar house represent? Well, it's self-worth. It can be our everyday finances. So Saturn can, of course, be quite limiting. So the logic here is that you may have to approach your resources with a degree of extra care going forwards. And of course, we've got those collective headwinds that are affecting us all in terms of the fiscal environment is getting a lot tougher. So if you're someone who has a natural appreciation of upcycling and thrift and being pretty canny about how you use your resources, you can see this is a great challenge to just fine tune your ongoing approach. If you're someone who has been a little bit more free and easy with your money, this is a time to be a lot more uh, 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 careful in what you spend your money on. But Saturn in terms of self-worth can be quite complex. Saturn can see us start to doubt ourselves. We may feel that other people judge us for our lack of money or status. So that self-worth thing can work in a spiritual and an emotional dimension, but also in a more material way. So the lessons that Saturn brings could be quite challenging, but also as ever with Saturn, the harder we work, the more we can make progress. So the good ideas you've been developing over the last two and a half years can now be converted into something more tangible, practical and productive with Saturn's help. So do see it as an opportunity as much as a test. Now on March the 14th, we do have an exact square between Mars and Neptune. If this rings a bell, it's because through October and November, within three degrees, they were challenging one another. Now within three degrees this year, between the 6th of March and the 22nd of March, they are in touch. Mars in your fifth house is very flamboyant. Neptune, of course, is governing your finances as much as Saturn in some ways, but Neptune is a, a very gassy, very uh, unsubstantive energy. It can distort. So when it comes to a romantic situation, for sure, if there is someone you're strongly drawn to, you can't quite get a fix on what they stand for. This is telling you to proceed with a degree of caution. And as I said at the beginning of this broadcast, Neptune very influential this year. So when it comes to any speculation, probably best to use that Saturnian energy and err on the side of caution. If you're buying or selling anything, just be cautious too that someone may not represent their goods or services in quite the way they actually are because Neptune can be deceptive and Mars can be about desire. So the very thing we want and piques our interest, someone may know that and manipulate that desire. So just be conscious of that. But March the 20th, we see the vernal equinox, the spring equinox, and the start of the Western tropical zodiac calendar. And this ushers in Cardinal Quadrant 1 for 2023. And of course, the sun arrives in Aries. For us all, this is a time to initiate, show passion and drive, and listen to our instincts. For you, the next 13 weeks is a great opportunity, but particularly the following four weeks, to articulate your ideas. Now, this is particularly true this year, because the next day sees a new moon in the sign of Aries, of course, but this is a new moon which is squaring up to Mars, right at the end of its journey in the sign of Gemini. So nearly in the sixth house of Cancer, so this three six energy can create a kind of freneticness, a desire to get a lot done quickly. But you know, the midpoint on that cardinal quadrant is actually in Pisces, and it's combining with Neptune, your second house, and it's squaring with Mars. So once again, a cautionary note around your desires. However, 
the new moon does see a, a really constructive link between Mars and Saturn. So if we approach things in a very pragmatic, step-by-step, -step, systematic way, progress can still be made over that following quarter of the year. Venus is also in the sign of Taurus, which it governs at this point of the year, and this can off offset some of the restlessness of Uranus. And if you want to decorate or repurpose your furnishings, uh, a great opportunity to do so. There could also be good news of a family addition. But March the 23rd sees Pluto arrive in Aquarius. A massive event, of course, but it is so brief. And it really will only affect those people who were born right at the start of Aquarius, like myself, the 21st of January. If you're later into Aquarius, the effect of Pluto will be felt much more from January 2024. But March the 25th sees Mars finally end that giant occupation in the most glorious part of your scope. And it gets seriously practical for the following six weeks. But Mars in the sixth house is a fantastic opportunity to get physically fitter, be a bit more virtuous in our approach. Mars in the sign of Cancer is not at its best because the wateriness of Cancer can denude the drive of Mars, the fire of Mars, somewhat. But we must remember that Mars also rules the water sign of Scorpio. So your passion to improve the structures of your world can still make progress. It just requires attention to detail and narrowing the focus over that six week period. Now, April the 20th and 21st, depending on where you are in the world, sees the second lunation in Aries, but this one is the solar eclipse. But it conjoins or conjuncts Jupiter, the planet of expansion, the planet of possibility, and the planet of luck in traditional astrology. So this is going to provide a real window of opportunity in the following six months. If you're someone who wants to write that book, publish your own blog, uh, you know, maybe learn to, to uh, software development. If you're someone who wants to interact more in your local community, have an improvement in your relationship with siblings, this can be a really blessed solar eclipse. But it does square up with, with Pluto. And when Pluto and Jupiter are in a square, our desire to get what we want is very strong. But maybe the position of Pluto right on that cusp of the 12th and 1st houses can see you share your story in a very compelling and persuasive way. And other people can be much more receptive to your ideas in the following half year. Now May the 1st, however, does see Mercury slam on the brakes in the sign of Taurus through to the 15th. When it comes to anything to do with buying and selling or renting and or leasing property, there could be some slowdown or delays, but also an opportunity to rethink these areas, have some discussions, recalibrate your approach. May the 5th or 6th, depending on where you are in the world, sees the lunar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio. So this is the mirror of that very potent total solar eclipse, which occurred on the 8th of November at the end of last year. But this time, it's the sun that's side by side with Uranus, and the moon is in the deep sign of Scorpio. So you can use this energy to repoint your desires around that home issue, which has proved to be such a thorny subject over the last few years. But it may require some toggling in terms of your worldly role. The other thing that's uh, interesting about this particular influence is that it doesn't have Saturn in a detrimental way affecting it. So that's something to really take for, against that uh, total lunar eclipse which occurred at the end of last year where Saturn was very prominent. The 15th, as I mentioned before, Mercury goes direct. Things can develop greater clarity around all these themes of how you live 
in your home environment. May the 16th also sees Jupiter arrive in the fourth house, bringing greater potential, the desire, but also an uplift. You know, there's going to be a sense of, of, the, of the possibilities of your situation, not just the limitations. Also, from May the 17th through to June the 16th, the reversing North Node combines with Jupiter. They become exact on the 1st of June. So good luck around the property matter could manifest itself across that month. Also, May the 19th sees the new moon in the sign of Taurus. And this one's forging a great link with Mars in Cancer. So the practicality of Mars in Cancer linking back to the more emotional dimension of you finding the right place for you to prosper for you, your family, uh, your uh, immediate emotional and spiritual needs. So a lot of good news coming in to push back some of the tensions and stresses that have been so prevalent in that area for Aquarius people for the last few years. Now May the 20th is a really exciting event because Mars, the planet of passion and desire, and also instant gratification moves into your opposite sign. And it's going to be there through to the 10th of July. But the next day on May the 21st, it does go opposite Pluto in the sign of Aquarius. If there's someone you've long fancied, this combination can give you enormous encouragement to just really go for it, to have a much more devil may care attitude. It could push you outside your comfort zone and you may not be successful in your quest, but the desire to get what you need can see you much more risk-taking and direct and dynamic, which someone can find quite eternal. But also, in another sense, the opposition between Mars and Pluto could see a big argument break out, because Mars moving into the seventh house is a very assertive transit. Great if we do want to uh, bring a greater spark to our love life, but it also can see us saying what we want in a much firmer way. And with Pluto in the mix, a very firm way. So that could be exciting if you're someone who's quite sporty and likes sort of more one-to-one -one combative action, whether it's judo or tennis, badminton, this transit for the following six weeks, really exciting. But in general, I think when it comes to your work situation, you can be more combative and competitive, and, but also let people know what you will or will not accept. So that's quite exciting. Now on June the 1st, as I mentioned, Jupiter goes exactly conjunct the North Node. And this can be the high point of that potential fortune over where to live. But June the 6th, Venus sweeps into Leo for the following four and a half months. So this begins another incredible window of opportunity in this year for you personally. Venus in the 7th house is very different to Mars. Venus tends to, uh, to trigger cooperation and harmony in the 7th house. But of course, the sign of Leo is very glamorous and very charismatic. So this can give you a big push to manifest your needs in those ways. So believe that things can improve for you, particularly if you're looking for someone particularly significant to come into your world. Now, June the 11th sees Pluto return to Capricorn. And as I said, it's going to be the people who were born right at the start of Aquarius, which really pick up the power of Pluto at this point. But for the vast part of uh, the Aquarius uh, clan, I feel that there is more uh, reflection that is going to be uh, uh, triggered by Pluto moving back into the sign of Capricorn. And of course, Venus and Pluto's combination in the 12th house at the start of the year and Mercury, how we think. But June the 17th, very big event because Saturn goes into a retrograde. Now, because of some of the financial headwinds that we're facing, we can't individually control some of those. And the reality of that could become clear through to the 4th of November. But one of the things about Aquarius people is you have a unique 
set of assets which other people don't necessarily have. It's possible they can if they have a good combination of Saturn and Uranus in their natal charts. But just in terms of a zodiac sign, there is a duality between the love of traditionality and continuity and, and routine that comes from Saturn, but also an openness to new ways of doing things that comes through Uranus. So Saturn going retrograde for you, Saturn's an energy that's been impacting on you all of your life. It's part of your very being. So it just means that you've got to find the ways to embrace your more future forward identity through Uranus to adapt, to deal with the new, harsher, uh, practical reality we're all living in. And therefore, you have a greater than average chance to work with this energy in a very productive way. So have maximum self-belief in yourself. June the 18th sees, on the face of it, a glorious new moon in House 5, the sign of Gemini, and of course, Sister Air sign. This is wonderful for playing, for romancing, for demonstrating our talents. Guess what? It squares Neptune. So once more, Neptune is the kingmaker of this year. And Neptune's lack of clarity needs to compete with Saturn's absolute uh, brutal reality. And if we can find a midpoint between the two, that's going to be the way to go this year. But again, there could be someone that you're really attracted to, that maybe there's something a little bit uh, tricksy about them that you're not sure of. And if you're not sure, be very cautious, particularly if money is talked about. Now, June the 21st, we see the summer solstice. The sun moves in to the sign of Cancer. And this ushers in Cardinal Quadrant 2 for the year. And the next 13 weeks, we're all, but particularly the next four weeks, going to be thinking about security and nurture and the environment or our personal environment. But for you, this is how six, very much to do with where you work, your everyday life structure, just how disciplined and virtuous you are or not. But on this event, Venus and Mars within three or four degrees are conjunct in the sign of Leo. If you are looking for someone to come into your life, it could be through your work, this happens, or in a very ordinary and work-a-day situation. Also, Jupiter is forging a, a lovely link to Saturn. Jupiter in your fourth house, Saturn in your second. You're getting a real sense of how you can use the available budget you've got in an effective way, but also your relationship with others can be a strength of the collaboration and connection you can bring to that next 13 week period. July the 12th sees the North Node reverse into the sign of Aries for the first time in 18 and a half years. So do think back if you're old enough to what was going on for you then. Expect to pick up in your mental energy, your desire to share your creativity, your knowledge, but also you can have a greater desire to learn new things as well. July the 17th, the Cancer New Moon forges a really positive link to Uranus. Thinking outside the box, decluttering, anything which is open-minded about resources or your home, a very good thing to do. July the 23rd, however, sees Venus go into a retrograde in the sign of Leo. There's bound to be some flirty moments in Venus and Mars's transit through your opposite sign. I think the retrograde's asking you to just go beyond the, the surface interactions and try to understand your deeper needs or where someone's coming from. August the 1st can bring this to the boil a little bit because there's a full moon in your sign. So if you're unhappy about a relationship, you're going to need to work on this in the here and now. Also, if money is part of the problem, with Mercury in your eighth house in an opposition to Saturn, this can be a crunch point in the relationship. But Mars and Jupiter, just like they did at the turn of the year, forge a great alliance. So at that point in the year, once more you can use their enthusiasm and energy to overcome challenges. August the 16th, 
the Leo new moon is conjunct the retreat in Venus. For, so for the next month, a real wonderful opportunity to get a much more constructive vibe going around your relationships. However, on August the 23rd, Mercury goes retrograde in its home zone of Virgo. For you, the eighth house. You've already had Saturn opposing uh, Mercury on the 1st of August. So at this point, there may be some rethinking that may need to be done about an entrepreneurial scheme, a longer term financial plan you have. And of course, attention to detail and precision, always important with Mercury's retrograde. August the 27th, however, sees Mars burst its way into your ninth house. If you need a holiday, this is a great time to, to, to do it, to be more spontaneous, to embrace that freedom loving and independent loving part of your nature. But August the 29th, Uranus, your modern ruler, goes back into retrograde. If there is more thinking to be done about your needs, your emotional needs, and your need for space, this is going to be the time. August the 31st sees a really tricky full moon in the sign of Pisces because this is conjunct Saturn. So once more, you're being asked to be incredibly realistic about balancing the ins and the outgoings in your budgetary situation. September the 3rd, however, Venus goes direct in the 7th house in Leo and some clarity can start to emerge. So on September the 4th, Jupiter goes into a retrograde which lasts through to the 30th of December. Don't see this as being unfortunate, but it does suggest that the more Piscean energy of Jupiter, which is more spiritual, is probably going to be more relevant to you than the more expansive energy of the rulership of Sagittarius. So it's a time to count our blessings, to appreciate what we've got. You might feel a little more inward at this phase of the year. And also with on September the 15th, the Virgo new moon, emphasizing your longer term transformations, also long term finance, but forging a great link to Uranus, now in its retrograde, but Mercury goes direct in the eighth house on the same day. There's a lot of deep stuff uh, going on for you. So a time to, uh, as I say, reflect, take a pause, uh, just try to understand the deeper uh, threads that are making up part of your situation. But September the 23rd brings us to the third of the cardinal quadrants of 2023 and ushers in the sun into the sign of Libra, which of course is your sister air triplicity. And for us all, relationships take on much greater importance in the following 13 weeks, but particularly in the following month. Now, ironically, on this event, the midpoint between the sun and the moon is actually in Scorpio, which is a very visible part of your situation. It's to do with your worldly interactions. And it's, it is in an opposition to that retreat in Jupiter. Some good news around a professional affair or a property matter can manifest itself in the following 13 weeks. But when it comes to expanding your desire to, uh, to enjoy uh, the more material dimension of life, because the sun's in a quincunx with Saturn, uh, I just think it's important to retain what I said at the beginning of this forecast, not to be too gung-ho to resources. Marshal them shrewdly. It's not just Saturn. It is the distortion of Neptune throughout this year. But this particular quincunx is, of course, Saturn. Now, that desire to raise your profile and do better in a professional context is boosted on October the 12th by Mars making its way into the sign of Scorpio, which it rules. And through till November the 24th, you can show a lot more authority, determination and self-confidence when it comes to uh, going for your goals and ambitions. October the 14th, however, sees that glorious solar eclipse in your sister air sign of Libra. A great time to think about travel or travel linked to work 
or expanding your thinking, perhaps through a course of higher education or a professional qualification. October the 28th, however, sees the lunar eclipse. If you remember, this lunar eclipse last year in Taurus occurred on the 8th of November, but had Uranus alongside it and squared Saturn in a very challenging way. But this one actually forges a brilliant link to Saturn. So if you're really getting into the groove of how to work with the resources you've got and to work with them in an effective way, some kind of improvement can gain traction at this time. Also, the Scorpio new moon on November the 1st forges a great link to Saturn. You can see how Saturn can reward all that hard work and application. Also, Saturn goes direct on the 4th of November, something we'll all be pleased about. But on November the 24th, Mars makes its way into the most sociable part of your scope, and December the 12th, New Moon in Sagittarius is conjunct Mars. So your desire to really uh, embrace those more Aquarian values of community, of collectivism, of you know appreciating people's individuality, being more sociable, it really gives you a massive boost as you're going into the festive period. It is true mid-December, the 13th Mercury, back into a retrograde in Capricorn, which of course started this year's story. So we've had Capricorn returning to the position it was at the start of the year, and this is the fourth of the Earth uh, Mercury retrogrades. But the uh, uh, position of Mercury retreats into Sagittarius on the 23rd, which for you is those friendships again. Perhaps as ever at these times of year, some people can disappoint us, not be so reliable. But I think the position of Mercury initially in uh, retrograde in the sign of Capricorn is quite an inward one. And Mercury's retrograde is kind of living alongside the more exuberant energy of the new moon conjunct Mars. So I think it's a case of being really picky about who you spend your time with. But the final cardinal quadrant of the year obviously influences only the last nine or ten days of 2023. But it does see a, a great link between the Sun and the retreat in Mercury, but also Jupiter and Saturn. So hard work can be rewarded. You can look back at the end of this year and think, wow, you know, I've come a long way in terms of understanding my needs about where I live and how. And also Jupiter goes direct right at the end of the year. We also have a, uh, a Capricorn new moon, which forges a terrific angle with Jupiter, despite its retrograde at that time. So I think your appreciation of what you've got is going to deepen as this year goes on. And for sure, there may be some income sources that do change. And it may be a time for all of us of uh, battening down the hatches and really uh, making the most uh, and appreciating what we have rather than a constant need to enjoy the more material side of life. So a fascinating year for you Aquarius, certainly those relationships with that very long Venus transit, very exciting, a lot of mental stimulation, uh, the need to be cautious about your resources is there but also grow that psychological dimension is going to be very important too.